Hi, this is Chloe from Inner Whispers and today I will be unboxing the Sybil of the Heart Oracle. So it came wrapped in this lovely paper. As you can see, it comes in this lovely packaging designed to look like an old-fashioned box. Oh, mine's a little dinged there. Um, and with this little catch here. So now let's take a look inside. Beautiful display. There, excuse me. So inside we have a little bit of advertising for other decks by this same person or editing house perhaps and we have the deck in a sparkly red bag to match the heart nature of it though it's actually a little bit too small to close but it'll still hold it quite well, I guess. And bringing out the cards. These are big, is my very first impression. This deck is said to be a kind of variant on the Lenormand that they found these images. Um, let's see if it says. So as you can see, the book contains some interesting information historically about the Rosicrucian Society and states that there was a um, book with 40 plates showing symbols of the rose, the cross and the heart and these cards are based on those. The book gives a little image of each card, some key words deeper meanings, advice, and some possible combinations. Because of the fact that it has key words and combinations, and some of the symbols themselves are very similar to Lenormand cards, I was expecting the deck to be a Lenormand size in order to be able to still do something like the Grand Tableau. Um, however, that isn't the case because these are literally tarot size. Um, I would say that they're very nearly exactly double the size of a Lenormand card. Let's check that out. I've got a Lenormand deck close by. As a comparison, here is a regular Lenormand card. It is, as I say, more than, well, it's big. Let's take a look at the cards themselves. So let's go through the cards. We have preparation, union, makes me think of the ring card growth, constancy, liberation, love, time, balance, clarification, Collaboration, interestingly with a scythe in it, so very different from the scythe in the Lenormand. Here I guess there's an emphasis on the scythe being used for harvest, which is something that the 
tribe would have done together or that the village would have done together. Threat with a snake under it. Stubbornness with a cross. Coffin, number 13 here. Cure, temptation, enemy, hope, journey, rebirth, triumph, wisdom, gaiety, house, message, conflict, this is closer to the traditional whips card I guess but it's at number 25, money, vanity, lovely image reminiscent of the Egyptian mat, surprise, Lie, rest, immaturity, protection, worry, prison, sorrow, caution, I like that cute little snail, I have to say. It makes me laugh. Reward. Has a bit of a eight of ones feeling to it in a strange way. But yes, I like those juicy grapes and a prosperous city. Jealousy. Very close to the growth card. I'll pull those two out. Hypocrisy. And the last card, if it wants to come out, is Trial. Then we have a final card, which is a signed title card. Now let me try and pull out Growth was quite close to the front. Okay. So... At number three we have growth. There's a heart with kind of a thorny bit at the base and wheat growing out of it. And here we have jealousy and once again it's a heart, a thorny base and with little snowdrops maybe or lilies perhaps. So the backgrounds are different. The brown, the thorny sort of base is a bit different but they do have quite a lot of similarity, these two images. One, however, has a sun in it, and the other one doesn't, so in terms of happiness, this is growth and this is jealousy. Altogether, the cards are certainly quite pretty. The cardstock is fairly thick. Um, it's, I'm finding it a little hard to separate the cards. It shuffles reasonably well, but there is a certain roughness to how the cards go back together. We'll see how that develops over time. And I'll look forward to reading the history more in depth. That was part of what attracted me to this deck. Certainly, it seems to be of a similar style to, for example, both the Lenormand and the Kipper, I guess there were a lot of card types or card games of this type at that time um, with slightly different words and so forth. The only thing, as I say, is they are very large if you were to try and read them in a Grand Tableau style reading. But that's fine because I don't very often do grand tableaus. But it is nice to have that possibility. Anyhow, these are a different set of cards. They can be used in a more oracular fashion, I believe. And I will look into that in the book uh, with, let's see, 
if it has suggestions for how to read. So it has an introduction to methods of divination and reading two cards. It's unusual. It says the method of two cards, but then you actually read four cards in two houses. So the house being almost the spread position and then the cards having two cards in each spread position, so to speak. Um, you can search for the hidden card, have a suggestion card. Suggestions for the meanings of the houses. This in many ways just seems to me to be spread positions, basically, and they call it a house. Perhaps I'm misreading that. We'll see later. The method of three cards once again has six cards because you draw for each of three houses or spread positions. And it does talk about doing a grand tableau. So that's interesting because that will be really huge with these cards which are more than double the size of a regular Lenormand deck. So I can't see that being very easy to do. And strangely, it gives house meanings but only for some of the houses. Altogether this is clearly a deck where it's going to take a little time to get to know it, to understand its system, and we shall see how that goes. The Sybil of the Heart.